Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at arithmetic in Kotlin. So Kotlin has the usual arithmetical operators that you will be familiar with if you've done any programming in the past. As an example, let's use print line and let's just do a really simple arithmetical calculation like nine plus 3.4. If I run this, we're gonna see the result on the console, 12.4. So the plus operator works just like you'd expect. And similarly, we've got some others like minus and the multiply operator is actually star. And if we run these, they all work as you'd expect. Now there's a slight complication with division. So let's try some division. I'm going to do seven divided by three. And if we run this, we find this actually behaves the same way that it does in Java and several other programming languages. If you have two integers, two whole numbers involved in a division, you get an integer form of division, which discards the remainder. So we've got a remainder of one here, but that's just thrown away. If you actually want to do floating point division, you want a floating point answer, then at least one of these numbers has to be a floating point number, it has to have a decimal point in it. And we can easily convert between different types when it's possible to do so in Kotlin using methods that are attached to objects in Kotlin. So if you're new to this, you won't know what an object is yet, but basically everything in Kotlin is an object. What that means is that every significant entity in Kotlin is an entity that can both represent some data and also has functions attached to it, which we call methods. A function or method is just a block of code that we can run essentially, and they usually have names, but not necessarily. So for example, in this case, suppose I want to convert three to 3.0. I can do that by typing immediately after the three, dot two double, open and close round brackets. Three is what we call an object of type int. And we say that two double is a method of the int class or the int object. Let's just run this to see what it does. So now we've got floating point division. We've got a floating point answer here. And it's important to realize that we haven't changed this three exactly. What we've done is to run some code that was attached to this three. And that code, which has the name two double, has produced, or we say returned, the value 3.0. And if you're new to this, the way to get used to it is just by trying it out and typing. Similarly, Let's take a look at an example where by itself we would have floating point division. Let's try seven divided by 3.0. And if we run that, because one of the values involved in this division is a floating point number, we get a floating point result. But we could, if we wanted to, convert this 3.0 to an int by adding dot to int, open and close round brackets, after it and then we will get the value two because now this is integer division and we've just discarded the remainder. One last arithmetical operator I want to show you here is the mod operator, which works on integers. And this works the same as it does in other programming languages, if you've seen any of those. So if I write seven mod three, this is just gonna do the division and it's actually going to give me the remainder. So that's just going to be one because seven divided by three is two with a remainder of one. Now, if you are familiar with programming in some language already, you can probably stop watching this video at this point, because what I want to go over now is just how we use variables in arithmetical expressions in Kotlin. And that is basically extremely similar to how we use them in other programming languages. So this sort of thing is, is not really that much use because we could just work it out on a calculator. Or we could put it into Google or whatever. We don't need a program to work out simple arithmetic, but the values involved can be variables. So for example, let's create a variable, which I'll just call value one, and I'll set that equal to three. And now we can do print line seven, divided by value one. And we're going to get the result two because we're doing integer division. Here it is. And this kind of thing works on variables just as well as it does on the numbers directly themselves. So if I wanted to convert this to a double, I could just write dot 
to double. And if I run that, now we get floating point division because one of these values, in this case, this value here, which happens to be equal to three, is a double precision number. It's a floating point number. Now these conversion methods, to double and to int, and there are others as well, even work on strings. So let's say I have a variable, let's call it text one, and I'm gonna set that equal to five. Now you can't do this. You can't do print line text one multiplied by two. So we're getting an error here. Why can't we do this? Well, although this looks like a number five, because it's got double quotes around it, it's actually considered a string. It's a bit of text and you can't multiply bits of text. If we want to do this, we're going to have to convert this text to a number. And that clearly is possible because it is just a string representation of a number. So here I can do dot to int or to double. And if I run this, it now actually works. We've got 10. If you try to do that with a string that can't be converted to a number, let's put a letter in there and try to run it. We'll get a thing called a trace back or a stack trace. We can say that an exception has been thrown. And although these exceptions look a bit intimidating when you first see them, the top line tends to be the most informative. And we can see here it's telling me there's some kind of number format problem for this input string. And clearly that just isn't a number. So to get this to work, we have to go back to this. Now we can actually make our programs handle this more gracefully. We're gonna look at that in a later video because ideally you don't wanna create programs that could somehow produce a stack trace or an exception trace like this because it's gonna frighten the end user if there is an end user. And finally, you can also use variables to store the results of calculations. So let's say val result equals, let's use value one and multiply it by three and add on two. And then, so we can see it, let's do print line result. And if we run it, we find that result has been set to 11. Why 11? Well, we've got value one, which we set equal to three, multiply by three, that's nine, and we've added on two, and that gives us 11. Now this is always going to be interpreted as value one times three, and then add on two. That's also true even if we do two plus value one times three. So if we run that, we still get 11, it's still the same result. The reason for that is something called operator precedence. The multiplication and division operators have a higher precedence than plus or minus. And what that actually means is that this is gonna be evaluated first before this is evaluated. If we actually wanted this bit to be evaluated first, so we wanted to do two plus three, then times three, we could put brackets around this bit to change how this equation is interpreted. And if we run that now, we get 15 instead. So that's two plus three is five times three is 15. So this isn't saying that result is somehow already equal to this. Remember, this is the assignment operator. We're evaluating this expression here. An expression is basically anything that can be evaluated to some value. And we are assigning the result to this variable called result. It's as if we're just storing this in there really and then we can print that out later. And of course we could call that whatever we want. So that's it for this video. Let's zoom out a bit and get all this stuff on the screen. If you're coming to this from Java or some other language, I think the only things that are gonna be new to here are these conversion methods, which even numbers have attached to them because even numbers are objects. They're not just pieces of data. They are actually things that have attached functions like two int and two double that you can actually run. If you're a completely new programmer, if you're new to programming, the thing to do is just try all this out. Don't stress about it too much, just try it out and try to invent some new variations on these things yourself. So practice using variables in expressions like we have done here, with or without to int or to double, and try using variables to store the results of arithmetical expressions as well. Check how that works.
The key is just to practice it a little bit. That's it for this video and until next time, happy coding.